We got Mr. CR in the house. Yes, sir. This is like our third time, huh? Yeah, motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> the first time we was actually posted up on town. Yeah, yeah. And 107th. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then the second time we were posted up a little bit further oh, 104th. north. 104th. 104th. In Avalon. Oh, oh, 104th in Avalon at the homeboy's house that didn't want to really speak. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. You, and now, now I know why he didn't want to speak. But he was one of the founders yeah, yeah, yeah. of, uh, name, name the set, name the hood. Uh, Eastside Hustlers. Eastside Hustler. Eastside Hustler Crips, <laughs> supposedly. And it's what, 104? 104, 104, 104 and 108, and then it was a, a 91st Street, but none of the niggas that used to ever be on 91st Street. So it was just 104 and 108? Yeah, that was really the main thing. Okay. And 115th Street, but they don't be on 115th Street either, they be over there. So how's the Hustler Nation doing, man? Uh, I don't know. I don't fuck with them dudes no more, man. You know, it's a whole... That's, that's what I'm saying. Now, now I see why um, dude didn't want to get on the interview. You want to talk about it? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could talk about it, yeah. Because, you, know, uh, um, you know, for the most part, when you from a gang that somebody else start or whatever, and then you, you doing your thing or whatever, you start moving up and up and up, your name start getting big or whatever. So then when your name start getting big, you know, you start getting people that's talking about you behind your back. It, 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 uh, 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 hating, you start getting bigger than the people that supposedly call themselves founders of the shit, you know what I mean? Then, then they start um, doing some hater shit on you. Anyway, to make a long story short, after a while when I started going over there, I started always feeling like, damn, man, I'm hanging with these dudes. I'm probably going to have to bring a gun over here, not just only to protect myself from the outside people coming in, but also to protect myself from one of these dudes. In my mind, I was feeling like that. And there'll be certain days where, uh, uh, It'd be smoking niggas warning me, like, hey, man, be careful, because uh, them dudes over there was just talking about you. I'm like, man, these niggas ain't going to do nothing to me. You know what I mean? But anyway, to make a long story short, uh, um, uh, um, it got to a point where um, some, you know, there was the people talking, oh, we run the hood, we run the hood. I'm like, nigga, you niggas don't run me. I approached these dudes about that. All this type of shit developed into a, a mutiny on a low or whatever. And then the shit hit the fan when I got into it with the people we didn't get along with. And then they tried to set up some kind of head up fight with me and this other dude. And the whole time behind, my, they don't know that the guy that from the hood we didn't get along with, and the, the so-called big homie was conspiring with these dudes to get me out the way. They was gonna use me as a bargaining chip. They, like the dude, like yeah, man, you can give me the person who uh, killed my peoples. We can get you CR. We'll get you CR. They, they was gonna use me like a chess piece. So basically, if you can give me, if we can chip this nigga, y'all can just kill this nigga. And this is a nigga I was, this a nigga I was hanging with every day. I was just sitting on this nigga porch right before, you know what I mean? And so then y'all gonna sit at this, and then they, as soon as I look, yeah, man, we can get down. They would have got me right then and there. So was this person from another set? Yeah, they was from the main, right, the people we didn't get on with. But the big homies behind my back on the low was having meetings with these dudes. And certain homies wouldn't, wouldn't tell me exactly what the meetings was about until after all the shit hit the fan. You know, this is what they was doing, this is what they were doing. I'm like, oh, I see, that's why niggas was at this point. That's why when I do interviews, nobody want to get on camera and stand next to a nigga, because the whole town is plotting on me in, in, anyway. So why do you think there was this um, animosity towards you coming from the big homie? Well, well uh, um, at one point I had this dude that's acting as my manager, right? So uh, uh, um, uh, um, after a while, the shit, the music shit wasn't cracking like everybody thought it was going to crack. So he, what he was doing is like, uh, he would tell other people like, yeah, man, you want to open up for CR, man? Shoot me $200, man, and then you can come down and perform for him. The whole time, there's no show that, that sent him $2 to us to open up for me. For what show? There's no show popping. So then niggas start getting at me online. Like, hey, nigga, uh, uh, I paid your boy $200 to perform for you, nigga. You ain't even got no show. Um, so I had to check this nigga. Hey, don't use my name to 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 uh to uh, uh, uh get your little bullshit ass dollars on it, especially if I ain't getting nothing out of it. Oh, that started stemming from that. Nigga, don't use my name, nigga, to, to turn it to, for your quick come up. And I'm not, especially if I ain't getting nothing out of it. But it was like situations like that that, that led to the, that shit. Uh, so the niggas probably like, well, man, fuck this nigga. Man, fact, they kill my people, man. Yeah, man, y'all want this nigga? Man, y'all can have this nigga, man. You know what I mean? But then the way niggas was acting when I would pull up certain day, I was like. Wonder why niggas acting all kind of funny? Why niggas don't want to stand next to me? And why does and why why the enemies feel so comfortable with coming over here and then hopping out on me like that? Because the whole time the homies from my hood was having meetings with these niggas. Like yeah, y'all could get this nigga. Do you think that the meetings with the with the dude from the other hood was started started about you or were they already starting to function with each other? I think some of them dudes already knew each other. Then some of them cash some of them cash was in jail. It's funny because w- when we was on the streets beefing back and forth with these guys, it was some dudes that was in jail 
being their friends. It was always like a thing to where when, when I first got put on that shit, and I used to get into it with them dudes, they, and I'd come back to the, the, the homies, I'd be like, man, them niggas just trying to jump me. they always be like, well, they don't do me like that. Or they act like they didn't want to. But I'm like, nigga, I'm right. I'm, they on me because I'm representing y'all. So it was just a whole lot of niggas pick and choose who they want to, who back they want to have or who they want to go to war with, who they don't want to go with. Because niggas be scared, man. If niggas be scared, and that's what I'm saying. At the, nigga, I put my all in that shit, dog. I was a young nigga. I learned how to fight, fuck with that stupid shit. I was one of, I'm like, man, you know what? When I get older, I'm going to handle it myself. You know what I mean? And do rap videos and shit, all that, physical, all that shit. And anyway, I got to a point when then niggas like, man, let's get this nigga up out of here, man. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.